Now almost finally, we're going to use this half inch drill bit to drill partially into the front of the gun and then we're going to use that little hole to install one of these half inch magnets into it. I got these from Home Depot. In fact, pretty much everything that I made this gun out of I got from either Home Depot or Menards in case you were going to ask. Just drip a little epoxy in it and drop the magnet in the heck. There we go. Squish the magnet in there so the epoxy gushes out from around the sides and then you try to coat it with the epoxy so that it can really, really stay in there. And after I painted it up and fired it a few times, I decided I wasn't totally satisfied with the power of it. So what I did is I took four more clamps, I clamped them up like this, and then I drilled through this little thing that holds the spring in there and holds the two halves together. And then I slipped them into all the clamps so that each clamp now has two springs giving this whole thing the power of eight clamps. And then to make sure that the extra springs don't swing up and interfere with the string, uh, I just put a little bit of wire between both of the loops and this should keep them both together. And that's really all there is to it. You just cock it back like I showed you in the demonstration video or whatever you would call the last video that I showed you and you just load a crappy arrow into there and you see how uh, the metal pipe around the front of the arrow um, is attracted to the magnet so that makes sure that the front of the arrow stays down and then the uh, spring on the back holds down the back part and I'm gonna see if I can shoot this thing while it's laying down now from all the way back here and as you can see it sinks all the way down to the stopper and you might be thinking, man, I really like your creative usage of clamps on this thing. It's a shame you didn't make a full-sized one. Well, I actually did. I made this one, I want to say about a year ago, maybe a year and a half. I'm not really sure. It was a while ago. Um, I do have a build video on it. Uh, it might not be as great as the build videos that I make right now. Not that the build videos I make right now are by any means great. Uh, but yeah, the main differences between these two crossbows is that obviously this one doesn't have the uh, loading hooks um, and also the trigger mechanism is way, way, way simpler. And just because of the size and the longer power stroke, um, this one is obviously going to be a lot more powerful than this one. Now I'll warn you now, I most likely will not be coming out with a build video on how to make a full size one of these just because, well, for one, we've already got the build video on this and for two, like I always say, if you want to make this but bigger, just make this but bigger. If you want to see the build video on this guy, then go ahead and click on this annotation right here. I don't show myself putting these extra springs in the crossbow in that old video though, because I just thought of doing that right now. Um, but aside from that, this is exactly the same as you'll see in the video from a year or a year and a half ago. Here's a quick little power comparison between the two. So yeah, pretty close, but I'm going to say this one's a little bit stronger. Now I'm kind of curious to see what will happen if I shoot the little bolt out of the big one. I have a bad feeling this is not going to work. Oh boy. What the... Well, I missed the foam, but I hit this door, and it hammered the nail through one of the slats. Now I'll be the first to say it, this is not by any means the most deadly, dangerous, powerful crossbow you will ever lay eyes on. Uh, but if there's a bad guy standing on the business end of one of these things, I promise he's not going to be able to differentiate between 10 inches of penetration and 20 inches of penetration. He's guaranteed a bad day either way. And you might be wondering also what uh, the difference is between a reverse draw crossbow and a standard crossbow that would have the limbs up here that curve backwards. Uh, well, there are a couple of advantages of the reverse draw method over the standard crossbow. For one, uh, the crossbows are a little bit more narrow, uh, but the main thing is that you can actually have the crossbow be a lot shorter while still maintaining either an equal or longer power stroke than having the standard limbs. The power... Now the power stroke is the total distance that the string travels from the drawn state to the resting state. The power stroke is what gives the arrow the acceleration, you know, the, uh, the power. The reason why the reverse draw method has a superior power stroke is because since uh, the limbs start all the way back here and go up to the front, you have the option to make the uh, end point of the power stroke all the way at the tip of the gun. Now like I said, I made this one a long time ago, I, I wasn't completely sure about what the point of a reverse draw crossbow was. 
um, so I gave it this extra length right here that's kind of unnecessary. If I had the time, I would just cut this off right here and reinstall the magnet right here, but I don't want to bother with that right now. But with the reverse draw method, you had the option to make the string all the way at the front. If it were the standard crossbow with the limbs in the front, they would come out, they curve down like this, and you know, in the case of compound crossbows, they also have a big cam right here. Uh, so in the end, your string ends up like right here. It comes across the crossbow all the way back here, and that gives you just that much of a power stroke as opposed to all the way to the tip of it. A longer power stroke equals more acceleration, which means your arrow is gonna fly faster and hit harder, as is evident with pretty much any pistol crossbow that you can get, which will Will never be as powerful as a full-size crossbow. All in all, I really see nothing but advantages to the reverse draw method over the standard method. If you're gonna try to build a crossbow in the near future, I would really suggest you try one of these out. Right now, uh, the most powerful crossbow in the world at the time of me filming this video is uh, it's some some model of the Scorpid crossbow, and that is a reverse draw crossbow. Uh, for all the same reasons that I just mentioned, um, reverse draw is always gonna be a lot better than the standard version until somebody proves me wrong. All right, link in the description for the build video on the big one. Like I said, it's pretty old, so just bear with me. Uh, but that is just about all I got for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Today we're going to be making a really special crystal pos- crystal poswell? A very special cri- pistol crossbow. Oh my gosh.